sixth chapter, Jesus called in the synagogue. He said to those who followed him, except ye eat my flesh and drink my blood, ye have no life in you. This was hard to receive. And so many of Jesus' disciples began to forsake him. He looked to the twelve and said, Will you also? Go away. Simon Peter answered and said, Lord, to whom shall we go? For thou hast the words of eternal life. We believe and are sure that thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. With all of the things that's going on in this world, where else can we go to Jesus? Yeah. Uh, can't go to the White House because it's in chaos. <laughs> so the best place you need to turn is God's house. Because Jesus is the Christ. The Son of the living God. God is good. God is not just good some of the time. God has shown up a good God all the time. And we just, on account of the blessing and the privilege, each and every day to be called the children of God. So good to see you this morning. Always good to uh, be in the house of God with the people of God. As we attempt to try to do the will of God, in this place. Yeah. Amen. Always good to see those who are our guests and friends. Uh, you have honored us with your presence uh, on this morning. Many other places in the city you could have gone, but you chose to uh, worship with the people of God on the boulevard. Yeah. We are so happy to have you. We'll recognize you personally uh, at the close of this uh, assembly. But we just say to you, uh, at this point, welcome to the football. For a few minutes from the text that was read to the hearing, uh, we'll take just a few thoughts this morning, and uh, we, uh, we will let you know. We made our way back to uh, the book of Romans, uh, chapter 12, uh, and we uh, tried to Continue to preach our way through uh, this this powerful book. This morning, verse three, beginning chapter twelve. For I say, through the grace given to me, to every man that is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly. According as God had dealt to every man the measure of faith, for as we have many members in one body, and all members have not the same office, so we, being many, or one body in Christ, and every one members one of another, having been gifts. Differently according to the grace that is given to us with the prophecy. Let us prophesy according to the proportion of faith or ministry. Let us wait on our ministry or he that teaches on teaching or he that exhorts on exhortation. He that giveth, let him do it, do it with simplicity. He that ruleth with diligence, he that showeth mercy with cheerfulness. We last visited Romans 12. Uh, we looked at verse verses 1 and 2 as we labored under the thought when my condition in the 
interferes with my transition. Right. Uh, this morning, so if we ever become unified, mm -hmm. Satan will be terrified. Right. If we ever become unified, Satan will be terrified. You will agree with me when I say that unprecedented things have taken place when folk decide to get together. We can especially identify uh, in the African American community when we were denied basic rights for years, but when civil rights workers began to bring the African American African American community together, things started changing for the better. Folk fought and died for the right to vote. But now we killing each other over stuff that had no back. What is even more disturbing is when the people of God who ought to represent love and harmony are disjointed, disunited, and in disarray cannot come together for the common cause of lifting up the name of Christ. When a community of the converted or committing spiritual crimes against each other for no other reason other than personal agendas. Satan sits back and laughs, laughs because there's very little that he has to do to destroy the church because we doing that on our own. But if we stop long enough to look at the fact that there is division within the body of Christ instead of helping each other, we are hurting each other instead of being a blessing. We are engaged in backbiting. And somewhere along the line, we need to recognize that if we ever become unified, Satan will be terrified. Yeah. Two things I believe he shows us from this, uh, these passages of Scripture this morning that we want to try to bring out as we labor under this thought. If, if, if we ever going to be unified, cause Satan to be terrified, the first thing we got to do is that we have to recognize that motives that are personal have to be minimized. We'll see this uh, in verses 3 through 5. And then, finally, uh, if we ever become unified so that Satan can be terrified, ministry for the master has to be maximized. As we labor uh, from this thought this morning, if we ever become unified, Satan will be terrified. Yeah. Paul in verses 1 and 2 of chapter 12 presents case for giving our bodies as a living sacrifice and uh, that takes place through a transformed and renewed man. Now in verse 3 uh, introduces additional consideration and evidence to confirm what he had, had just talked about in the first two verses. He says in verse 3 Paul, a it is a statement of explanation. Uh, for I say through the grace given unto me to every man that is among you not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly according as God had dealt to every man the measure of faith. Through the favor given to him, Paul says, from God and the authority that he has as an apostle of Jesus Christ. He speaks to every man that is among the Romans and warns them not to overestimate or think too highly of yourself because the only statement that 
you have to measure yourself by is God. He warns against being conceited and filled with pride because if we are to be successful in being unified as a body of believers and causing Satan to be terrified, the motives that are personal have to be minimized. What can do more damage to a local church than anything else is when a member or members have an overrated or overestimated evaluation of themselves. You ain't all that in a bad tip. And so opposed to the thinking that you are something that you are not, the way that you should think is so to think in a way as to act with a sound mind or with wisdom is the idea of the text. When we uh, think soberly, humility comes into play uh, because we will recognize that whatever ability or gift we have is a limited portion that comes from God. When I have a sober, practical estimation of my gift and ability, it's when I become productive in the kingdom. As long as I see myself as something uh, that I'm not, that's kind of productive thinking. And you ain't going to get nothing done in the kingdom of God. Because you have an overestimation of who you are. And it causes this unity and disorganization. See, I knew y'all were looking just like that. <laughs> and he says in verse 45, for, again, a statement of explanation. As we have many members in one body, and all members have not the same office, so we, being many, are uh, one body in Christ and everyone members one of another. He puts forth the notion that it is the function, listen, it is the function of each member in the body of Christ to serve the body. We got it twisted. We feel that it is the function of the body to serve the members. No, no, no. Every member of the body of Christ has a specific function and uh, there has to be cooperation and participation of each member to accomplish the overall purpose of the one body. You ain't in the church to get your way. The reason God has placed each of us in the church, in the body, is to serve the body of Christ. It is not the part of the purpose of the body to serve you as a member. First Corinthians chapter 20, the verses of 12 and 4, as the body is one. And have many members. And all the members of that one body being member, being many, are one body. So also is Christ. For by one spirit are we all baptized into one body. Whether we be Jews or Gentiles, whether we be born or free, and have been all made to drink into one spirit. For the body who keeps uh, bring up this word, uh, giving a, a statement of explanation. For the body is not uh, the one member, but many. If the foot shall say, because I'm not the hand, I'm not of the body. Is it therefore not of the body? And if the ear shall say, because I am not the eye, I'm not of the body. Is it therefore not in the body? If the whole body were not, where would it end? If the 
the whole uh, word hearing, well understanding. But now has God set the members. Listen. But now has God set the members, every one of them, in the body as it has pleased Him. And if they were all one member, well understanding. But now are they many members? Uh, 
uh, gave uh, all of the servants so many talents. And he left town. He gave one five. He gave one two. He gave one one. The one uh, had five. And he used it uh, wisely. And he gave five more talents. He, he gave the one with two. Uh, uh, he gave one two talents. And he used it wisely. And he gave two more talents. The one he gave a uh, one didn't do nothing. When he hid me, Master came back. Well, uh, why didn't you do something with the talent uh, that I gave you? And if you had put it in me, I could have gained some interest off of it. You didn't, so since you didn't do nothing with it, I'm going to take it from you and give it to the Lord with the team. You will not only, if you underestimate your value, as a member of the body of Christ, and do nothing. Not only will you do a disservice to the church, but you'll mess around and lose your own law. Yeah. You got a place. You got a responsibility. God gave you a talent. He expects for you to use it. It's never going to be unified. So that Satan will be terrified. Motives that are personal have to be minimal. Now, 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 now come back tonight. I'm going to go back. We're going to use uh, verse 3. We're just going to deal with uh, Romans 12, verse 3. Uh, give us about 10 or 12 minutes tonight. Come back. We're going to talk about Mr. Bishop. Who do you think you are? But that's not me. Let me finish this this morning. Well, once we minimize personal motives, ministry for the master has to be maximized. He says in verse 6, Father, heaven did different according to the grace that is given to us with a prophecy. Let us prophesy according to the proportion of faith or our ministry. Let us wait on our ministry or he that teaches on teaching or he that uh, exhorted on exhortation. He that give it, let him do it with simplicity. He that rule it with diligence. He that showeth mercy with children. Having clarified in verse 4 and 5 uh, that uh, every member in the body has a function, he now specifies what the various gifts or those functions are. He says, having the gifts different according to the grace that is given to us. Everybody has a different endowment of talent. Yeah. God gave me what he intended for me to have, and he holds me responsible for using what I had. And you ought to know what God gave you, he intended for you to have, and he's going to hold you responsible for using what he gave you. Yeah. Then he goes on to say, what about Prophecy. Let us prophesy according to the proportion of faith. Now, in the words of Rick Ricky Carter, let me let me just explain. The word prophecy means to predict, to to tell forth. It is a prediction of of future events. But it also has a dual meaning. The second of which is, is more commonly used in the New Testament. And it means to declare or make known the will of God. To interpret the scripture and purposes of God. It was, listen, watch this. It was a temporary function used for the settlement and establishment of the church and once the church had been established, it ceased to exist. If somebody tell you today that they are a prophet, they don't know who they are, or they don't want to say 
this country. That gift ceased after the church. It was a temporary gift given for the establishment and the settlement of the church. That's why he says in the last part of the verse, according to the proportion of faith or measure of faith. The idea is this, is that those who had the gift of prophecy were to confine themselves strictly to their function and not usurp the authority over or of the apostles. You, you remember in 1 Corinthians chapter 14, uh, when uh, those who had been given the gift of prophecy and, and speaking in tongues, uh, they were in the assembly and everybody was trying to use their gift at the same time. And it was a mess. There was somebody who was trying to prophesy, there was somebody who was trying to speak. And Paul said, unless somebody interprets, you ain't edifying nobody. You just make it known. You talking to yourself. If one uh, speaks in tongues, or if somebody needs to interpret. And then finally, at the end of the chapter, he said, let everything be done decently and in order. Then, in verse 78, he says, or ministry, or in service. And it, it gives the idea, uh, the office of, of deacons in this case. Let us wait on uh, uh, our ministry. Uh, this phrase uh, in, in your Bible, let us wait on, uh, is in a tattoo. That was not in the original Greek uh, language. It was inserted uh, to add ease of reading. Uh, but it does not appear in the original Greek. But it means to give attention to or be occupied with your ministry. Or he that teaches those who instruct uh, on teaching. Or he that enjoy it. On um, exhortation, a calling to one side is the word of uh, encouragement uh, and comfort uh, is, is, the, is the responsibility of that particular function. He that give it, those who distribute arms to the poor again, he makes reference to, to the work and to the service of people. Let him do it with simplicity, with liberality, and unselfish motives. He that rule it, who those who preside, elders, with diligence, uh, with haste and care, is how uh, you ought to preside, how you ought to watch over the flock. He that showeth mercy, anyone who is called upon to perform acts of compassion toward the sick, the poor, the bereaved, here's how you ought to do it. You ought to do it with cheerfulness, a kind, patient disposition, Every function, every gift that God has placed in the church are not toys to play with, nor weapons to fight with, but tools to deal with. Everything we do individually is to contribute to the building of the body collectively. This ain't about no personal, it ain't about me. It ain't about you. It's about the church, the body of Christ, and whatever God has given to me, I contribute in whatever people way I can to the good of the whole body. We are to be a thing. We are to be successful. 
said that animal trainers say that the secret of handling lions, tigers, and leopards is to keep them constantly afraid. The instant they get over their feet, they will attack. They are treacherous beasts and often gather courage for an attack when the trainer's eyes are turned away from them. You never know when they will spring at their keeper if they have a chance to do it from behind. I will fight with the forces of evil just like that. Satan is always seeking to attack us from behind. In ambush. He goes about like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. But he is a great coward when faced with courage. James says, resist the devil, and he'll flee from you. You run a Set up, set up, man. Uh, set up. Uh, uh, Y'all set up. Wake up. Set up. Uh, come, come on here. There. Come, come on here. Come on here. Everybody line up. Everybody line up. Okay, let me move this way. Okay. All right. What y'all doing in? Lock on. Lock on. Lock on. Today. Sometimes today. Lock on. <laughs> okay. Y'all yeah, missing up my point. Now, if, if we are unified, and come here, Stephen. Turn the nigga loose for, for a few minutes. Stand right there. Okay, I want you, I want you to be safe. Okay. Uh, this is for illustrated purpose. If, if the church is unified, and if Satan is trying to attack from that angle, if the whole church moves, move, brothers, if the whole church moves in that direction, you can't get in. If you try to go to the other direction, if the whole church is moving in the same direction, you can't get in. If you try to come forward, you're going to get resistance. If the whole church stands unified, somebody said, resist the devil. And he'll say, Resist him, and he'll be from you. If we ever become unified, say it. Don't be terrified. Because somebody will put the word out. There's some folk down there for the book 39 that was pressing. Who are unified, standing on the word of God. And every time Satan tried to get in, they got him right. Yeah. If, if we ever become unified, Satan will be. And one of the reasons why we got all kinds of foolishness going on in our brotherhood is it's because uh, of, of, of folk thinking that there's something that they like. We have individual personal agendas, personal motives. We're not working together. We're not unified. We're not working for the common good of the one body. And Satan just, y'all supposed to have the truth. And y'all doing a whole fight and poke out of the world. That's why it can't happen. It can't happen in here. It can't happen. We got to be unified. We got to stand together. Can I throw some air, air out of green this? Let's stay together. <laughs> Love you, Emma. Well, the time is good, man. How many of that? Let's stay together. Right. And, and you, you hear me say this. In each week, in, in the prayer that I pray prior to us going into worship, I pray is that each in each worship assembly that we will be in. 
that the devil will be horrified. In God's name, that ain't just a catchy cliche. There's a reason why I say that. Because I won't say to be scared, sisters. If he come in here trying to stir some stuff because he gonna find that everybody in the football team is like, is you mad? Stand together. Everybody's using their gifts to the honor and glory of God. And when you decide you want to have a personal agenda and personal motives, Go against the will of God, He gonna use you to slip in the church. Right. That's why you gotta stand up. You gotta always be alert. Be alert. Always be watching. If you face Satan, face to face, James said, resist it. He ain't nothing but a coward. If you stand up to it, he'll run from it. Because his agenda is to attack you from behind when you ain't watching. If you got your eyes on you, you leave you alone. Boulevard, let's be united. Let's be unified. And let's terrify. And what that means is, it's going to take, listen, we can ready to build a new facility. If we don't build the church before we get into that new facility, Satan mess around and cause us to have problems when we get over there. We got to be unified and stand together before we get in the new building. Because the church has already been together. It's going to call for everybody to find your place. Determine what your gift is. Determine what your function is in this body. Determine what it is that God has called you. Because, see, if, if, if you are not functioning, or if you think less, if you think you're not important to degree, that you don't do anything, as we try to point out, you're going to cause the whole body, you're going to cause the whole church to live. Or if you know what your function is and you're not performing it, it's going to cause the same effect. So we got to figure out what our responsibility is, get involved, do what God has given, and then we stand together as a united, fortified front. And Satan's going to try to get in, he's going to leave you alone. But then every time he comes, we wait on you can't get in. So check yourself. Ch check your own, your personal life. And see where you fit in, or see where you not fit in. And if you ain't getting in, get in. Because Satan is real. And we ain't killed. He'll mess around and get in and destroy this church. We ain't gonna let that happen. We ain't gonna let that happen. Because we are unified. And we're gonna keep him terrified. Somebody's here this morning. You're not a member of the Lord's body. You're not saying yes uh, to the gospel of Christ. Right now, Satan is not worried about you because he, he's not afraid of you because he got you where he wants you. He has your eyes blinded from the truth. But you're here today not by any coincidence because God wants you to be here to hear about the glorious gospel of his son, Jesus. That's good news. The death, burial, and resurrection. How Jesus uh, both died, was resurrected, now uh, sits on the right hand of the Father. He wants you to hear uh, about 
the good news how Jesus can save you from, from your sins. You do that by hearing the word. Romans 10, 17, believing that same word. Hebrews 11, 6. Right. Repenting, turning from your way of belief. Turning from your way of understanding. Luke 13, 3 and 5. Confessing Christ to be the Son of God. Matthew 10, 32, 33. Acts chapter 8, verse 35. Follow. Be baptized in the water of grave baptism for the remission of your sins. Acts 2, 38. Get up a brand new creation. A brand new creature. Yeah. Be faithful unto death. God got a crowd with you. And then, when you leave here today, Satan, he might not be as scared of you uh, as he will be, but he, he's going to be a little bit afraid because now you're a child of God. Right. The blindness have been taken off your eyes and, and you got the truth. If you keep on being faithful, keep working out your soul's salvation, every day Satan's going to be a little bit more afraid of you because now he recognizes you ain't on this side no more. You're on the Lord's side. Leave your baptized believer. Give your life to God. Serve Him. Find your function. Find your place in this place. And let God use you. Everybody on the floor. Somebody, somebody's here. Somebody see you. You know you've not been functioning. You know that you have not been using your gifts. That God has, has measured to each of us. You've fallen short. You've fallen by the wayside. And and if, if, if you really are honest, you, you recognize that you are probably a target of Satan. Because when the enemy tries to get into uh, a fortress, they look for the weak spot. You don't want to be a weak, you don't want to be a weak spot. You don't want to be a weak link. And let Satan use you to infiltrate the body of Christ. You, you know, you know where you are. You know what you need to do. So the question I ask this morning, who's on the Lord's side? You know you're not where you need to be, where you need to be. I'm, I'm, I'm giving the Lord all I got. I want this body to be a unified body. And so you're here this morning. You have a desire to do the same. I, I encourage you. Come join this group. As we stand unified together to serve God in this place. I want you to do it just now as we sing this song of invitation. Why don't you come? Say yes. Praise me now. Why don't you go again? Say yes. Amen.